Blair. Um, three peat champs from 15, 16, and 17. Had a blast coaching those dudes. We had some major dudes. So that's me. Uh, I don't really like to talk about myself, but here's my experience. I was lucky enough to uh, play at Upper Darby High School, played football at Upper Darby um, from, De from Delaware County. I um, was really lucky to play at, um, at Wesley College, a D3 school, national powerhouse in Dover, Delaware. So I played there, and then I was lucky enough to coach there um, under Coach Strass and Coach Naff and Coach Az. So I was an O-line assistant in 08 and 09. And then um, I was lucky enough to get hired on as a full-time staff member in 2010. I was there for a few years. I was O-line coach, uh, video coordinator, strength and conditioning coach. Um, you know, that's the joy of uh, working at a, a small college is you get to do all those things. So I was thrown right into it. I was ready. I was ready to roll. And then my last year there, I coached tight ends when I got my teaching job. I teach at uh, an elementary school in the Smyrna School District. I've been at Smyrna High School coaching football at Smyrna High School um, since 2014 and um, coached a lot of great dudes. I coach under Mike Judy. He's uh, he's the GOAT, man. He's uh, he's my dude. Um, our OC, Mike Marks, I'm, I'm under him. We work, we work together. Um, he's my dude. I love working with that dude. And uh, the staff is phenomenal. And I lo love our guys. Our players are incredible. Um, so at Smyrna, we, uh, you know, when we talk about pass pro fundamentals and, and scheme and all that stuff, all that stuff is great, but you got to have a, a mentality as an old lineman. Um, we like to talk and, and call ourselves junkyard dogs, and, and we want to play the game. Just imagine what a junkyard dog looks like. You got to play the game that way. So this past season, we talked about being a dog. Um, it's, it's an acronym for uh, your demeanor. So I want my dudes to be the leaders of the team, especially the offense, but I want them to be the leaders of the team. So what's your outward behavior look like? We talk about that all the time. And then O in dog is overcome. So this past season was, man, it was not fun. Um, you know, we won a bunch of games, but it wasn't fun. So these kids had a lot to a lot of adversity to overcome. So we talked about overcoming all the adversity through football and then all the adversity that they'll face in their personal lives, whatever that may be. And adversity in every single drill, there's gonna be adversity, it's hard. You know, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So they have to overcome. And then be gutsy, G and dog is gutsy. When it comes to, uh, you know, how, the, how you play the game, throw your body around, um, how you communicate with your teammates, but also, you know, what you stand for, stand up for what you believe in, you know? Be gutsy enough to do those things. So before um, we start talking about pass pro and fundamentals, I had to talk about that stuff. So, you know, take pride in it. If you, if you come up with your own little whatever acronym or your uh, whatever you talk about with your guys, try to believe in it and uh, have them hopefully buy in. So, uh, of course, so, so they can be better. All right. So some general th thoughts. Um, all of this stuff, guys, is, again, my opinion, things that I believe in uh, based on my experience and, and research. And, I mean, you'll, you'll watch a ton, a ton of stuff. Hopefully, you'll watch a ton of stuff. You'll, you'll have things that you believe in. And then, you know, hopefully, you take, take as much as you can from it. Um, but I want you guys to focus on what's most important. So, for me, what's most important is, is your fundamentals, right? So, you one thing I really believe in in offensive line play is being ready to change direction and make contact in any point in the play. So our fundamentals are going to mirror that. And then have some knowledge on scheme and rules and things like that. And then as you teach, you want to try best to follow a progression. So I'll show you, I'm going to show you my progression, but have a progression so that you guys know, you know, the concept or know, know their fundamentals from start to finish. Uh, a great man told me once to never assume, never assume. So, you know, when we, when we go through our, um, our whole scheme and, and everything that we're going to teach, I start from the bare minimum, like stance. We start on that. Even if it's a senior, rising senior, or even a kid that may have just finished up playing with us and getting ready to play in college, we're always going to start with the stance, then our first step and so on, because I'd never want to assume that they know it, um, 
ran through that before, learned um, that you can't assume. I did assume one year, and you know we were we were really bad. We we're three and six that year when I assumed. I believe we we're three and six because of my guys, and that won't ever happen again. And then most importantly, chase perfection. And whatever whatever you're doing, whatever your kids are doing, have them chase perfection. All right, so my philosophy is, is and, and ours is we want to try to keep it as simple as possible. Everything we do is simple. We, we try to marry up our, our pass pro stuff with our run stuff. We'll use a lot of the same terminology, a lot of the same details um, to try to keep it as simple as possible. Of course, we want to create a pocket. You got to make, got to make that stick figure back there feel comfortable. And our body positioning is going to help us create the pocket. Our footwork is going to be key in keeping our body in the correct position to create that pocket. We want to try to stay inside out on defenders. DFYB, don't F your buddy. So if you're working with someone in, uh, let's say, a pass pro double, DFYB. Guys, I will get Coach on. Uh, oh, I think he's that back. There we go. Did you guys hear DFYB? Don't yeah. F your buddy, whether that's someone that you're working with or your quarterback or your teammate. All right, no one touches quarterback, duh, right? As, as uh, pass protectors, as O-linemen, no one touches quarterback. And as always, as an O-lineman, you have to be violent in everything that you do, from your steps to your punch to your finish, everything has to be violent. <clears throat> All right, so our teaching progression kind of, kind of hit on it for a second, but always going to go back to the stance. Everything starts in the stance, everything. All right, so um, I'll talk to you in a second about our stance, but we want to know what the backfield looks like, what the quarterback's doing, if the back is involved in the protection. Um, we want, I want to show them what the pocket looks like. And these are all day one things in camp, and then we'll revisit it and then revisit it so they know, never assume. So our body position are part of our everyday drills, PPP, our pass pro posture. Everyday drills, we're hitting these things. Our steps and footwork, we're part of the progression. We're going to hit those every day. We're going to hit our punch every day. We're going to talk about what defenders are going to do. Yeah, they're pretty basic. Um, I'm not going to give them anything crazy unless we're going to see it that week. But what's the defender going to try to do? We're going to give them that stuff. Of course, our scheme and then little details in uh, what they're going to see. Or um, we're two platoon. We're really lucky. So I get my guys all season long. So we get to hit those little details, you know, flashing hands or how to pick up stunts. We're going to hit those details in there too. Okay. So fundamentals, our stance. Here are some guys we've had in the past. Love these stances all the way to the left. 58 Brent Young, one of our strongest dudes. He played center and then moved to guard. And you, he was a completely different dude as, dude as soon as we took the ball out of his hands. 55 Tyke Moore, an absolute mauler, the ultimate competitor up front. Dude started a fight every day. It made me so happy. Every single day, he was trying to start a fight. He was trying to hammer somebody. 77, big Salim Warmly. Um, take major pride in Sal. That dude, he, he was an absolute beast. He's at Penn State right now. They love him up there. Um, hoping, hoping we see him in the starting lineup. Uh, there's a scene from our state, first state championship game. Um, that's a double tight, uh, double wing package that we have. All of our ma just major dudes, maulers going against a group of guys that we had no business beating, but we did because these dudes hammered it. And then there's my boy Porter. It's my son. He was probably three in that picture. He's five now. You already know I'm teaching him a three-point stance and eventually a two-point stance. But um, everything starts in the stance. So if, if you're not handling that detail, please handle that detail. Make sure your dudes, and I try to get my guys to take pride in their stance. All right, so I'll show my guys. I'll set them up. I'll have them all play. You know, hey, who wants to play quarterback? 
they're all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They can't throw a football, you know, 10 yards, but yeah, I want to play quarterback. So I get them back there and I'll line everything up and I'll show them what the pocket's going to look like. Hey, he wants to be running back. Oh, cool. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Chubbs, you can be, uh, you can be running back, hop in it, running back. So I'll show them, um, you know, what, what the quarterback's going to look like, where he's going to be five yards deep and what the pocket should look like. Um, this, I like this pocket. Um, I, it looks like most guys are inside out. Pass pro posture looks okay. And we're lucky we're going to trigger that ball fast. But of course we want that, you know, half a, we want that horseshoe shape. We want the quarterback's toes nice and clean. And we want to keep this stick figure upright. Uh, so yeah, I guess there was some Russell Wilson's going to get traded or something. It says, you know, why, why would, why the hell would Russell Wilson want to be a Raider? So that pocket is the pocket right there, fellas. That is the one. That is beautiful, and that Raiders O-line is nasty. My father-in-law would say that they stink because they're big-time Chiefs fans, but uh, that Raiders O-line is nasty. All right, but uh, that's what you want the pocket to look like. All right, keep it nice and clean. So our pass pro posture. When I teach pass pro posture, we talk about every cleat being in the ground. That's in, in everything that we do. Unless we're running out for a screen, every cleat is in the ground. We want our weight on the inside third because we're ready for contact. We're ready to change direction at any point in the play. So I want weight on the inside third of their feet. We, we teach duck demeanor and run game. So um, weight on the inside third is, is something that our guys will hear all the time. Um, we want power angles. See a nice Z in the knee in that picture, a decent Z in the knee from uh, our starting left guard, Shane Drabinski. Um, will be a major dude. You see him with some decent power angles. My man can bend a little bit. We want neutral spine. We're straight up and down. Hands open at the sternum. We talk about rolling the meatball at our chest. It'll help our feet move a little quicker, but we want our hands at our sternum ready to punch, ready to protect ourselves. We want our elbows tight because that gives us power in the upper body and we want our head out of the block. So we'll sit in that position. I will move their bodies to get them into that position. I'm like, yeah, dudes, it's really, really uncomfortable. Yes, it is. But everything we do is uncomfortable. And if it was easy, if it was comfortable, everybody would do it. So that's, um, they're the cues that we we'll use in, in past pro posture. And guys, as coach is switching his slides there, I, I put it in the chat. So this is being recorded. Uh, I, I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel, which also I put a link to in the chat. So if anytime you want to go back and, and review it, because um, Coach, again, is going to leave no stone unturned. So that is there as well. I just want to give you guys a heads up. And again, not to interrupt you, Coach, you're doing a great job. Yeah, you're good, man. So more, just more shots of past pro posture. I'm looking for pictures of O-line, man. And I'm telling you, it took me longer to find pictures of these dudes, of the O-line, of course, than to do anything else which is just brutal. We got to get bigs need more pictures. They need more, need more photos. Here's some other guys in past pro posture. I like uh, 74 right in the middle. Love Rasan's bend. He could probably sit his butt down a little bit more, right? But those hands are up. He's ready to make some contact. My dude, Robbie Robinson right there on the right. Love that he's lower than the defender. Hands are inside. That dude could bend. He was an absolute technician. But that's kind of what our pass pro posture is going to look like. All the way to the left there, I love what Sal's doing with his hands. His hands are up and ready for contact. All right, so our steps and footwork, again, need pass pro posture. Got to get that down first. We're going to get make them feel uncomfortable in their, in their pass set. But um, our steps are going to be big. And, again, we do these every single day. And I even add them into our everyday drills. I'm sorry, into our pre-practice drills. So this year, for example, all I had them do was snap out into a pass set and set to their man. And then, you know, it was like week six or week seven. I was like, all right, hey, you guys can finally get into a pass set. Now let's graduate to something else. Again, getting those details in every single day. And it was only about 10 minutes each day. They'd be with a partner and just snap out. But our steps, we call them pound steps when they move us to the ball, moving our inside foot. And our kick steps are the, are the steps that will take us away from the ball We'll step first with the outside foot. And then we're going to use these steps to keep our body inside out on defenders. So this picture right here of our starting right guard this year, um, Gordon was, a, was another technician and he had to be, he's really limited physically, but this body position is where we want to be at all times on defenders. 
His eyes are even with the inside V of the neck of that defender. I don't want him any more inside or any more outside. We consider this for guards and tackles square on defenders on the inside V of the neck. We want them, I want them, we want them on the inside V of the neck because, you know, I'll tell the guys like, hey, D lineman, and I'll have them listen in on, on Coach Barnes, our D line coach. He wants guys to work half the man. So I want them to understand, like, yo, these guys are going to try to work half of you. Force them to work your whole body. So we marry it up with our drive blocks. Our aiming point's the inside view of the neck. Your aiming point for pass pro is the inside view of the neck. And we're always going to be in that position to, again, form that pocket, make the stick figure feel comfortable. So that's, that's where our feet want to take us, right to that position. All right, so set into the man in this in this photo right here. Um, let's say it's you know maybe a big on big protection, and the left guard and left tackle are one on one with these defenders. That left guard and the left tackle are already inside out in that defender. So all they would really have to do is take a quick set and stay on that inside V. If the right guard was on the man side or or one on one side, he's going to move his body. He's going to take his pound step inside and get to that inside V of the neck. And then same thing with the right tackle. In the even front, the tackles are lucky. They're already inside out. But more of the details can, can, uh, can be talked about with those guys on how to be patient in their pass sets. But we want them to get to the inside view of the neck. And setting to the man, like I said, was our very first pass pro drill. I got him into their pass pro posture, made him feel comfortable. We take a couple of steps. Setting to the man is number one. So these dudes are going to hopefully, I mean, in their sleep, be able to set to a man, move their body, take their steps to get to the inside V of the neck and stay on the inside V. So an easy drill that we'll do is partner up. One, one guy will um, line up on the inside shoulder of the O lineman, hold his shoulder down. So we have some, some, um, this, something to really, you know, force our body through to snap out quickly, move his body inside, whether it's taking a pound step first or a kick, moving towards the ball or away from the ball, we're just going to snap out and then we're head up. So it changes when they're head up. They already know that I have to pr protect the inside first. Just snapping out is not okay. I got to snap out and move my body inside to get to the inside V. And then snapping out when the defender's on their outside shoulder, hand on the shoulder, snapping out quick, just a quick set, getting their body right to that inside V of the neck. We don't want them to overset. We want them right on that inside V. So we'll videotape things like this. We'll show them like, hey, I'll, I'll videotape it with my phone. And I'll show them like, hey, man, look, you, you, were, you were a little too far, a little too far inside. Or you overset that one a little bit. Let's try it again. We want to try to get our body to that spot. I want them to feel that snapping out quick. And then also seeing with their eyes where, where they should be on that defender. So setting to the man is number one. And we're going to hit that one for a while. There's our partner snap out. These are some of our footwork drills. I have some video of these. Um, step and replace is a huge one. And we're going to sit in that drill for a while. Set and kick or pound. Um, we're going to set to the man, pound and kick steps. Z drill is a big one that we do. Um, we'll do almost all season long. This past season, I had some young cats. So we had to sit in, in Z drill for a while. We had to get them you know, maybe keep their shoulders square as they would change direction from their pound step to their kick step. Um, a pass that redirect is, is, um, is one of my favorite drills because dudes need to understand that they're going to get some type of counter move. As soon as they snap out of their stance, we're going to find some defenses are going to move on us. The three turns into the two eye. We've got to be ready for it right now. And what it does is just ingrains in them changing their uh, change of direction to get their body where it needs to be right to that inside V of the neck and then classic mirror dodge and we'll progress in mirror dodge big time. All right. So let me, uh, I have, I have these drills. Um, let me get it over to these drills real quick. And again, guys, while, while coach is searching for that, if at any point in time, you guys have a question, please put it in the chat. I can certainly unmute you or, or you can just, if you want me to ask it, just put it in the chat. But um, again, if you need a question, just go ahead. Don't be afraid to ask. All right, guys. So this is our just set and kick. So we'll do this. We'll do this drill for our pound steps and our kick steps. Uh, we're pretty early on in this. 
And um, we just, all it is is guys snapping out and taking three steps. Even before this, we will step and replace. So what guys will do is they'll start in their pass pro posture and I will sit there and I'll yell kick. And when I say kick, they're going to take one kick step, moving their outside foot first, stepping and then replacing with the inside foot. What I don't want is guys getting too wide with their feet or too tight with their feet. Again, being ready to change direction and make contact in any point in the play. So even before this drill, we'll snap, we'll get into our pass set, good pass pro posture, move them if I need to. I'll yell kick, no kick, and they'll step and replace. Kick, step and replace, kick, step and replace. And then I'll see if they can recreate their stance. And if they can, that means they've kept their base in a pretty strong spot where they're able to um, hopefully make contact and be ready to change direction. So after we do our step and replace, we'll do it for kick steps and pound steps. Then we'll even add both. Like, all right, boys, we're going to pound first, then be ready to kick. So I'll yell out pound. They're in their pass pro posture. They pound in, kick, they kick, kick, and they kick again. Did they get too tight with their steps? Are they short six-inch steps? Are they big, dumb steps? We want short, choppy steps. And then we're going to roll through this, and they're going to get a bunch of reps. Again, we had some young cats, and uh, some of these guys did a pretty good job with snapping out, and some of them were pretty pretty uh, nice and low. And you see uh, our, our left guard, Shane, here, getting himself into pretty good pass pro posture, inside third, working his hands to hopefully help his feet move a little bit quicker. But you see him keep that nice wide base throughout the entire rep. And then right there, being able to recreate his stance. So we're going to hit that. We're going to hit this sucker for a while. This is early on this season. Mass on. Uh, ready to uh, ready to get a little bit better. All right. So the big kid in a green shirt. He's a freshman this year. Uh, he's got so much potential. I can't wait to continue to coach him. And uh, guess what he's going to do next year and the year after that. The year after that, he's going to do these drills to hopefully get these details down. A Wiley veteran up top in the white shirt, Gordon snapping out real quick, getting his hands right where I want them. Short, choppy steps, ready for contact, right? So we're going to hit these drills for a while. And here it is with the pound steps. So same thing. Again, even before we do this drill, we're going to, we're going to set, we're going to pound and step and replace. So the dudes will be in this position in their pass pro posture. And I'll say pound and they'll pound, step and replace, pound step and replace, pound, step and replace. We'll hit that for a while, and then we'll kind of up the tempo a little. They'll snap out of their stance, step and replace. My dude, my dude right up front, our starting right tackle. Uh, I, love, I love his fundamentals. You see him dragging that opposite foot, so I want guys to graze the grass with their steps. We're not taking big old dumb steps. We're taking short choppy ones, and we're going to graze the grass with our feet so again, we're ready for contact and ready to change direction. See these guys on the inside third of their feet. Every cleat's in the ground, focusing on some details. You know, again, this is early on. This guy right here had to work as a sophomore. He was a junior this year. He had to work as a sophomore to handle the details because he's blocking a lot of dudes that are a whole lot bigger than him, a whole lot more athletic than him, not tougher than him, but definitely more athletic than him. And that dude had to work to get to this position. I love what he's doing. Love where his hands are. All these guys, again, hands right at the sternum, rolling the meatball with our hands. Two young, young freshman cats in the back did a great job being coachable this year, handling their details. My dude in the black shirt, he's got really, really good feet. I can't wait to see how much better he gets. All right, same thing, kicking and replacing. All right, I know you can probably see what's wrong with my man here. Young pup, young freshman pup. Hey, big, coach. Big thighs, I can't wait to watch him get that much better. But you don't you don't see him getting into that pass set. Hey, coach. He's used to leaning on people. Hey, sorry, coach. I got a question for you. I, didn't, I, didn't, I was trying to look for a right time to interject. My bad. We got we got a question that says, how is sliding the foot? How is How does sliding the foot help more than taking a step? I see it as grazing the grass with your feet. You've got a point of contact in the ground. You have that thing in the ground for contact because you're going you're gonna to punch through that back foot. 
having a point of contact in the ground, uh, again, ready to change direction and, and punch off of that anchor back there. I wasn't a big time believer in it, but trying to make it as simple as possible and talking to them about grazing the grass with their feet and not picking their foot up and, and, and taking a while for that foot to hit the ground. We've got those things in the ground, so we're ready for those things, ready to make contact, ready to change direction. So I didn't teach it at first, like, you know, my first few years of teaching, then, you know, I hear more people talking about, you know, points of contact and then, you know, grazing the grass and all of that. I said, we're going to drag that, that opposite foot. So these guys right now would be dragging their inside foot as they take their steps with their outside foot or their kick step. Just making Maybe sure, right. just making sure you have enough time to change direction. Am I, am I getting you right there, coach? Yeah, definitely. And again, make that contact because I'm, I'm going to teach my guys to punch with that anchor down. A lot of these dudes aren't the strongest guys in the world, so they're going to need that anchor in the ground, that back foot in the ground, as they deliver their hands. Excellent. Make sense, Coach? Absolutely. So you can tell my man my man didn't take a pass set, didn't get his head back, big time leaner. Here's a more of a wily vet. Taking that pass set, you know, I want guys to get their head out of the block and snap out quick. Of course, they're going to have to use their eyes in pass pro and then move their body. It's all about seeing and reacting. So if your head's down low and eyes are down at the ground, you're not going to be able to see what's in front of you. You've got to see what's in front of you. Use your eyes. Get your body where it needs to be. So as that defender moves, my body is there because I see it. I'm able to change that direction. And then um, head back will also give us an angle on guys trying to work back inside. We can cut that thing off with our body. Our head's forward. He's got the angle. He's going to have us beat. All right, so more of these drills, we're setting and kicking, we're setting and pounding. All right, there's both of them at the same time. So again, we're gonna do these, we're gonna do these for a while. We're gonna sit in this for a while. <clears throat> Have some more. There's more cats, you know, have them work into a cone. I want them to work a kick angle. We don't vertical set. We're gonna, we're gonna kick on a 45 degree angle. Everybody's gonna kick on a 45 degree angle. I don't want our guys to get on different levels. We're gonna get rid of the ball quick. So we wanna create some passing lanes. We wanna make contact on those defenders. So we're not gonna vertical set. We're all gonna kick on that 45 degree angle. All right, so guys are gonna to work to that aiming point, that cone. Um, if they don't get to it, that's fine. If they don't work that, that uh, exactly to the cone, it's fine. It, it's more about seeing, seeing their steps and seeing them pound them in the ground get short choppy steps in the ground. All right, have some more. Again, we're gonna sit, we sit in those drills for a while, man. We're, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do my best at, at getting these dudes good at the details. And again, I'm lucky, man, I got them. I got them all to myself. My hands are on them all day. We're able to, we're able to focus on details. So after that, we'll progress to Z drill, uh, usually four cones. We just do pound and then kick. So I'll just set up three cones. We're going to try to make the shape of a Z in our steps. So I'll have them straddle this first cone. We're going to snap out. Uh, we'll also have this next guy up, hold the shoulders down. So trying to be get as many drills in as possible. So snapping out and then moving our feet and taking our steps. So they're just going to pound across their first cone, kick across to the other. You know, there's your defender working inside and then back out. I mean, not really worried about what the defender's doing now, but taking those steps, working on those details, getting our body ready to change direction. Hey, coach. Focus on really exploding out of that pound step. What's up, coach? Hey, so I got another question. Um, so would these drills work best or would, would they work at the youth level, five to 14 years old? And, and I guess maybe – um, if you, if they wouldn't, how would you modify them? Well, I have a five-year-old that lives with me in my house. And I don't know if, I don't know if that dude, my five-year-old would listen to these drills. Um, I don't know if they'd be able to, you know, control their body the way that maybe a 13 or 14 year old would. I think the older they get, I think these little details would definitely help them, but it doesn't, it ain't going to hurt them to be thrown into these drills or, you know, talk to them about keeping a wider base and taking short choppy steps, especially when they're 
going to make some contact on somebody, right? When they're driving somebody off the ball and, you know, whatever, let's say they're doing king of the boards, they're going to take a lot of short, choppy steps and they'll have success. So maybe it could translate into pass pro taking those shorter, choppier steps and then, you know, having that defender on them and punching that defender. So I think it could help, but I mean, you're probably going to have to do them every, every day with five-year-olds like herding cats, you know what I mean? Um, but I think, I think some of those, some of those could definitely help, especially in teaching them how to bend, showing them where you want their, your body to be. Hey, sitting your butt down, being lower than the man, teaching leverage. I think teaching leverage and things like that could definitely help those little young cats. Absolutely. Thanks. Kate. I, I love, I love giving this stuff to middle schoolers. You know, if we ever, if we have a chance to get back to normal, you know, getting my hands on those middle schoolers, just even just planting the seed on what we do, you know, hopefully, Hopefully they'll they'll take something from it, but again they're going to come back up to us as freshmen, and then we're going to have to we'll just again even if they're seniors we're gonna we're gonna go back to square one we're gonna go back to these drills because in my opinion they're they're extremely important. All right, so we're gonna hit we're gonna hit our Z drill. Um, this year we we didn't really have a chance to watch film with the guys a lot, so you know th this year was different. So we had to add you know we had to film had to film stuff. So they could see what they were doing. We didn't have a ton of time to, like, you know, really show them like every drill. Like, hey, this is what you did in your drill with the phone. So we videotape everything. So we'll make notes. We'll share it out with the kids. Uh, I was doing like I'm a I'm a elementary gym teacher, so I was very familiar with Screencastify, which was a whole lot of fun for any educators out there uh, having to videotape a lesson. So I'm I'm doing this right here with Screencastify. We're capturing the screen, showing them this, and I'm going through it with them just like this. And if we didn't, I would add notes to it so they would be able to see what they were doing, right? So for, for our, the guy in the green shirt, your base is too wide. You should, you know, quickly get out of your stance, get into pass pro posture. That's not happening here, right? So hopefully he's seeing that. And my man would always ask questions. So I wanted to make sure I gave him feedback. And I put an X over this guy's feet because you see him on his toes almost clicking his heels. I don't want that. I want, I want right there. If someone was to make contact with him, he'd be on his back. Right. So another freshman young cat that had to iron it out. And my man got a whole lot better at, by the end of the year by seeing this stuff and uh, focusing on the details like this. Don't ever want them shuffling. That looks like a shuffle position. We're not shuffling. We're ready to hammer somebody with our hands and our feet in the ground. All right. So giving them that feedback, you know, hey, man, you got to change direction. Change direction has got to be sharp. You know, we'll, we'll kind of go through half speed, too, early on. We'll go through this half speed, and then uh, we'll, we'll up the tempo a little bit. All right, boys, now I really want to see you taking quick steps, short, choppy steps, um, you know, really focusing on the change of direction in the Z drill, right? So my dudes had to go again. Wasn't a big fan of that rep. I had to go again. Uh, yeah, so if we didn't get the angle correct, again, we're not losing ground here. We're not passive in pass pro. We're not ever going to move backwards, right? We want to create that pocket. Here's our center. You never go backwards, man, to the very top of that pocket. Then we had to do a whole lot of work with, with my man, but he did a great job by the end of the year, got himself so much better. I hope it's through these drills, and I, I think it was through these drills. All right, so guys, we're working Z drill. See, see young cats doing it, older cats doing it. I uh, got some more for, for footwork. All right, so we kind of, we'll, we'll have mirror dodges the next. It's classic one, man, everybody does it. Um, but we'll, we'll progress into this. So I'll have defenders go about half speed at first, no hands, head out of the block, working on pass pro posture. Half speed will help those, um, I think it'll help everybody, but it really helps those young cats as we coach their footwork and then keeping their body where it needs to be. So we're doing a whole lot of different things with this drill. Of course, we're working our feet, change of direction, but the body's gotta be where it needs to be, which is on the inside B of the neck. So if um, right now, if this is a right guard or right tackle, we're beat inside right now. I know we're trying to get there. He's in the middle of his step. But we're beat. We've got to keep our body on that inside V of the neck. Looks like our left guard right here from this angle. It looks like he's on that inside V. Another Wiley vet. But we're going to go half speed with no hands. And then it'll progress. We'll go a little bit 
quicker, of course, with no hands. Then we'll add our hands. Then we'll add a punch. Then we'll add, uh, we'll add even a bull rush to it. Um, we'll add the redirect right to it from the start. Coach, I, I, I love this drill, man. I mean, I'm a huge believer in this. Um, I love that it's – I think it's – is it the last drill in your progression there as you progressed? Um, um, not really. It, okay. It's not really one of the last drills. The last drill really is the pass at redirect drill, but this is close to the end. Yeah. Again, we'll progress through that throughout the I, season. I love how functional this is. I love how the – well, the progression that you you put it into um, – so great work, coach. Yeah, I love this drill. I mean, even if young cats, if for the young cats, man, like even if this is all you did um, for those five and six year olds, you know, those, those young bucks, and if this is all you did, this might help. You know, it's like it's like defending in basketball. You're trying to keep your body in front of that body. Don't let them go to the basket. Don't let them, you know, don't let them get to that quarterback. You've got to keep your body just in run game, just in everything else that we do up front. Keep your body between the defender. And whoever has the ball, whether it's running back or the quarterback. It's, it's especially functional as you've given them the aim, the aiming point to the inside via the neck to to keep that guy now where they want them. Yeah, we got to keep it there, man. And we hammer the heck out of inside V, inside V, always in the inside via the neck. Uh, you know, here's, our, here's our right tackle, you know, Wiley Vet. Love his body position in that last drill. Love his body position. On that inside V, he's not assuming. He's seeing and reacting. Seeing and reacting. Never assuming, but seeing and reacting. Love that body position. I think I had a couple of different levels to, uh, to the mirror dodge in the, in the film um, or in the, in the drill tape here. The drill tape. So, you know, up in the tempo without the hands, that'll definitely help. So got, so got another question, coach. Um, okay. This says, why do you want their hands behind their back instead of the meatball rolling position? I think that might be what you're progressing to now, right? Yeah. So the very first thing we'll do is no hands focusing on keeping the neutral spine, keeping their pass pro posture. The hands and the punch aren't the focus yet. The focus is just body in the right position, especially early on, keeping the body in the right position on the versus the defender on that inside V, working their feet. Then eventually we'll add the hands. So I like to progress in it. Again, never assuming, you know, the senior in the back is going to do this drill right with no hands, but they're going to work their feet. And the defender hasn't hasn't attacked them yet, so they don't need their hands. The defender's just moving side to side. Then eventually that defender is going to attack them. And we'll, we'll talk about the punch and, you know, all that punch zone, all that stuff. But then we're going to add our hands in. If that defender gets into our punch zone, that's when we're going to deliver our hands. Now they get into the real pass pro posture, working their hands with their feet, body in the right position just part of the progression that I'm, I, I believe in teaching. And, and coach, last time we worked together, one thing I, I can tell all these guys that I, I already know about you is everything is a progression. That's one thing I love. And like you said, you never assume anything. So I, this is just from every drill you've lined up here, just seems like a progression to more functionality. So um, looks no very doubt, man. And I, I'm, I'm an elementary gym teacher. I'm a teacher. So you got to progress, man. You can't like, you know, you can't have dude just out there day one you know, trying to pick up a stunt or, you know, I know some people who would teach it and, and give them a blitz first. Like the very first thing they'll talk about is like, well, this is what you're going to do when a blitzer comes down. No, 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 no. That's not how you teach this stuff. You have to progress. These guys are young. They're, you know, they got the same mentality as the little kids that teach at, at the school. So like they need the progression too. Um, but we'll progress. The next thing would be adding the punch, you know, and, and uh, making sure their feet are continuing to move even though they're delivering their hands. Each rep, it seems like each rep that the guys get, you know, their first rep is probably a mess and that's okay. Then their next rep is just a little bit better. So my man on the right, 
You see him hopping in his feet, man. He loved to hop. He loved like shuffling around. Shuffling. He's got really, really great feet. He has phenomenal feet. And by the end of the year, the dude started as a freshman. He started a game against a rival and, and was, did a great job. And my man put in the work. You know, the dude, the dude put in the work and got himself better. We don't want happy feet here. Quick feet are great. Love quick feet, but not happy feet. Pound those suckers in the ground so we're ready to make some contact. That's where we're going we're gonna to create that torque as we deliver our hands. Here's a freshman here to the right, just kind of just a little, just a step behind, which is fine. Again, my, my dude got reps at the end of the year. He got himself a lot better. I hope it's because of the progression and doing this and maybe messing up or not looking as polished, whatever. But he got himself better by doing this stuff all season long. You know, if you're if you're a team that you know, again, we're lucky, man. We're two platoons, so I get my hands on all of these guys. And we were lucky to keep all of these guys all year long. Um, if you're a guy that doesn't have your hands on these guys for a long time, you know, maybe they have to go play defense. Um, you know, they go both ways. You can still do these drills every day and see these guys progress and get a little bit better because they're not difficult drills. They're not difficult at all. Um, and they're like coach said, they're super functional. So I love the I love my the right tackle's feet here. Love the feet. He's pounding them in the ground. If there was audio, I guarantee you'd be able to hear his feet. I want them, I want to hear their feet hit the ground. Love his body position. My man had to work really hard to to get these fundamentals down. Um uh, my man's blocking six five DNs that are, you know, basketball studs because that dude bought in. To the fundamentals and is one of the toughest dudes I've ever met. So again, progressing. And then the next thing would be in the progression of mirror dodge is, uh, you know, is adding the punch, right? Adding the punch and then add in some different, different defensive moves, right? So we're, we're there, we're working our hands and then we'd have the defenders get into their punch zone. They would deliver again, deliver their hands. Then, um, I'd progress to freezing them at the end of the drill. So on the whistle, they would freeze and, and just really focusing on where are you at the end of this drill? Are you in a powerful position? Are your feet ready for contact? Um, are, are you inside out on the defender? Then we would add different pass rush moves to the progression of, of uh, mirror dodge. So again, defenders attacking us, but then adding uh, tension throughout the entire rep. So then refitting their hands. So they made their contact. You know, you're, nobody's really strong enough to just punch and throw someone on the ground or get that separation. The defender's always going to be rushing into you. So we add, we add that tension. He's leaning into you. He's giving you pressure points. He's, the defender's giving you his shoulder. He's giving you his chest. He's giving you his other shoulder. He's spinning and giving you his back. So feeling the tension, feet are in the ground, continuing to move. And then stopping that tension, stopping that defender, being the wall of humanity, standing your ground with hands on while refitting them, right? So, I mean, are you getting driven back? All right, well, it's probably because your base is too tight. Or are you falling forward? Well, you're probably on your toes, right? So balance is going to be key as we feel that tension. Then, you know, adding, adding the bull rush. So I got my tension. I'm standing my ground. I'm changing direction feeling the pressure points, refit my hands. And then on the first whistle, I'm going to have the defender bull rush drive right through that, right through that offensive lineman. If, um, if the old lineman gets beat inside, Hey, guess what? Your body wasn't in the right position. If that defender moves you backwards, Hey, you're back on your heels or you're not low enough. Right. So teach and leverage in that too. leverage with hands inside, but also leverage underneath defenders. So again, progressing through that, man, so if you're if you're a young coach, not a young coach, if you're teaching young cats, mere dodge might be the one, man. Mere dodge might be the one because you can give them so many different uh, different scenarios, which which uh, hopefully can help those dudes. But again, we're, I'm doing it up here with, with the high school dudes. Um, so here's pass that redirect. It's my favorite drill. This is this is one that I'm I'm proud of my dudes because they graduated to 
from setting to the man to pass that redirect in pre-practice. I was super proud of. We had like a little party down in the corner over here. You see our corner. We had a party in the corner when they graduated to pass that redirect. They were really proud of themselves. But uh, in pre-practice, they'll do this too. And yes, we'll do it during practice. I need to see it. I need to see them perfect it. Right. So it'll start with um, it'll start with uh, let's say this is our left guard. It'll start with a defender. I'll set them all up the same way, whether they're on the left side of the line or the right side of the line. Defender, you're going to start on his right shoulder, your left, and then we're going to take the, the proper steps to set to that man. So if this is a left guard and this defender is on his inside shoulder, he's going to pound inside first because he's got to get to that inside via the neck. And then, of course, that defender is going to work half, going to want to work half of you. Or he's just moving. There's a stunt, whatever. There's a there's a game going on. He's going to move to the other shoulder. We're going to change direction and we're going to make contact. So before this, we would talk about our punch, when to deliver our hands, when guys would get into their punch zone. That's when we're going to deliver our hands. We're not going to, we're not reaching out for boobies. We are not reaching for boobies. We're not a blind man in a brothel. I tell, I tell them that all the time. They got to laugh out of that. You're not a blind man in a brothel. You are in there to be violent with your hands. And we're gonna strike when he enters our punch zone. If we punch too early, we get overextended, we're on our toes, now we're on our face. Can't be too early, it can't be too late. Can't allow that defender into your chest. So we're gonna find that that's about 18 inches from our chest, that's what I tell the guys. When he's about 18 inches from your chest, you're gonna deliver your hands. Well, we, we'll get so many reps at delivering our hands, their punch zone might be whatever might be two feet from their chest. It might be eight inches from their chest, whatever it is, they're gonna find that punch zone when that defender enters it, and then they're, then they're gonna shoot their hands. So we're telling early on and past that redirect, we will not have the defender attack the shoulder or get into the punch zone. But later on, again, we'll progress to that defender is gonna enter your punch zone. So I, I believe they enter the punch zone here. Yeah, so they're entering their punch zone in this drill, in this pass that redirect. But early on, all you really need to do, it's just like mirror, you have that defender just shuffle right down this line. You move to the other shoulder. You've got to change direction as an O-lineman to get on the inside V and stay on the inside V, right? So we're on the, on, on the uh, offensive lineman's right shoulder. Now we're head up. So I always tell the dudes, when you have a defender that's head up, where's the shortest path to the quarterback? Where's the quickest path? And then, you know, this happens, and we'll talk about this when we show them what the pocket looks like. You know, as a D end, the shortest path is going to be this straight line right through your inside shoulder, right? As a, as a, a guard, same thing. The, the, the path, the shortest path to quarterback is right through the inside shoulder. So we always want to protect inside out first, protect the inside first. So right now, Go back to this right guard, or sorry, left guard. This defender's head up. His first step is going to be a pound step inside to get his body on the inside V. And again, I ain't going to assume, man. I'm going to, I'm going to be on him to protect the inside first. Last thing we need is, as a guard or a tackle, getting beat inside and then the stick figures on the ground. We don't want that. Protect the inside out, create the pocket. And then be physical when it's time to be physical. Right? So they're entering the punch zone right? Delivering their violent punch. And while we're doing this, we're talking about sitting our butt down, being ready for contact, right? So here's that, that same guys, our left guard. Now the defender's on the outside shoulder. So they'll get three reps in a row. If they're good, they'll get three reps in a row. Defender starts on the inside shoulder or his right shoulder, then head up, then the outside shoulder. It's really, it, it's simple and it doesn't take long, but they have to feel setting on those different techniques, whether it's if I'm a guard, a two wide, a two or a three. Right now, he's already on the inside V for the most part. So all he's got to do is take a, just a quick set, move my body and my eyes right on that inside V and then stay on that inside V, right? So he's, he knows there's a redirect, but I, I want their eyes to be perfect. So right now, he got us inside. So we got to go again. He eventually gets there. So I'll take it. We eventually get our body where it needs to be, but I want you to get on the inside V and stay on the inside V. 
All right, so here is a here's uh, uh, this guy played left tackle. He's a backup left tackle. He's got a tight a tight five right on his outside shoulder, right on his outside eye. He's already where it needs to be. He may feel like, man, this defender's head up on me. I'm going to protect inside first. Always protecting inside first. So he gets to the inside V and will stay on the inside V. And then we'll punch when it's time to punch. Be physical when it's time to be physical. Right guard, he has a defender on his inside shoulder. We're getting in to the inside V. Defender's going to work back out. And we're just going to redirect. And we're going to sit our butt down as we redirect. Feet continue to stay active. I like where his hands are. He's on the inside. He could probably be a little bit lower with his hands. Right, but I love that he's lower than def than the defender. All things that we that we want um, in pass pro. Let me go back to the back to the presentation real quick. All right, so as we punch, as we punch, punch is a huge part of it. So feet are number one, man. Footwork is huge. You could you could have the worst punch ever, but if your body's in the correct position, you at least give yourself a chance. To keep to to keep that pocket nice and clean, or keep your body on that defender. All right. So when we punch, when our, our hands in the correct position, of course, in in pass pro posture, we talk about leverage and run blocking. And in pass pro, um, leverage inside with our hands. We don't want our hands outside. You get your hands outside, man. You're gonna you're gonna screw yourself. And he's got control of you inside. You need that control inside. And of course, we got to be under the defender. We want our thumbs up and elbows tight. So a simple thing to sell elbows being tight to these guys is I'm going to have them. And it's, this is like, you know, day one, maybe even off season stuff stolen from coach Wiley, um, the old Browns coach Wiley veteran. He's the dude uh, coach Wiley, but he, he did a drill back in the day where to sell thumbs up and elbows tight, have them with one hand out palms facing the ground, thumb facing in have a buddy push their hand down. It's hard to keep your hand up, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Now have your palm facing the midpoint of your body with your thumb up, push his hand down. Oh, it's a little bit easier to keep your hand up, right? Oh, it was a little bit harder to push his hand down. Okay. Now have your elbow tight against your ribs with your thumb up. And then the dudes can't push their arm down. So I'm trying to show them that that is the powerful position that can help you um, control your defender and bring that violent punch, but it will also help keep our hands inside. We want to be violent with our punch when our feet in the ground, when we punch. And then I, I already kind of said, to you guys deliver your hands when the defender gets into your punch zone. So I don't have, a, I don't have a lot of punch drills, um, but simple ones and detailed ones are hand wars, you know, so both guys have their hands out. One guy's on offense, one guy's on defense. They're facing their partner and they're just going to fight each other for inside leverage. I like to have them both on offense. So not like, Hey, one guy's on defense, just kind of, you know, circle jerking. No, like you're both on offense and you're both trying to gain leverage. So they're both on offense, getting rid of their, their uh, opponent's hands and gaining leverage inside and, and, and grab a hold in there. I don't care. Grab a hold. If it's inside, if you ain't cheating, you ain't winning. So get those hands inside control that defender. Don't let them knock your hands out. Again, the, the top one is timing their punch. Um, it, it simple, simple one uh, that we'll do all the time is we'll, we'll just, again, have those guys right across from each other in partners. One guy will be in pass pro posture with hands in the right spot. We'll also add active feet to it. So they're timing that punch with the anchor in the ground and delivering our hands. The defender will just lean back into them or lean forward into them. As soon as he gets into your punch zone, you're going to deliver your hands. And then we'll just get a bunch of reps at that, maybe five in a row. You, you deliver your hands and extend, and then he'll roll back into you. You time your punch with active feet. We'll set to the man and punch. You guys kind of, kind of saw that with, uh, with the pass set redirect. You set to the man and then punch when you're on the inside view of the neck. Setting to the man means I've got to get my body to the inside view of the neck. If I have that defender, I've got to work my body to the inside V. And then when he enters my punch zone, I'm going to punch. We'll do it from our right shoulder. We'll go head up and then to the other shoulder. We're going to work those different sets and, and uh, deliver in our hands. And then we, we talked about mirror dodge, adding the punch to it. 
I don't have it on tape, but it was it was level two up the next level, level three, adding the punch to it. One of my my two favorite drills for for um, delivering the punch. I forget where I stole them, man, but you know, all this stuff is stolen. You got, you know, I mean, everybody's going to steal everything, but um, wall bag punch is one of my favorite ones. So um, I'll just set up a, um, either a, a, um, a half round up against a fence or um, somebody will hold a, just a hand shield up against the fence. Um, and what they're going to do is they're going to be um, pretty close to that bag in their punch zone. So we're kind of putting all the stuff together. So, active feet and then on the whistle they're going to deliver their hands so i'll have them aim at like a a part of the bag so i'll have the defender place the bag nice and low so they bend and when they punch they're punching from a nice low position so feet are active when that anchor hits the ground or shooting our hands um then i'm telling them man like and i had to flip out i didn't flip out on the guys a lot this year it was a tough year but i flipped when they weren't trying to punch that bag and knock the fence over boys we got there there might be some money somewhere dudes to fix the fence it doesn't matter knock the fence down dude. you want to deliver your hands as violent as you can and try to knock the fence over so they'll get about five six punches in then they'll switch after they punch they'll hold the bag the guy that's holding the bag will get to the back of the line uh, so putting pass pro posture in there um, active hands and active feet shooting their hands when the defender is in their punch zone. He's already in the punch zone. The bag's already in the punch zone. Delivering those hands against just almost an immovable object, you know, really challenging them to, to knock the thing over. You could do it against the wall. You could do it against whatever, a car, whatever. You can find a way to get this drill in. And I think it's going to help them not only, not only deliver a, a violent punch against something that's not going to move, but also control their body enough that when they deliver that blow, they're not falling backwards. They're not giving any ground. They're being nice and strong in there with that anchor in the ground as they shoot their hands. And then um, my favorite is two bag punch because it puts everything together. So one of the linemen will be standing there and they'll, they'll have two defenders in front of them with hand shields. They're going to keep those defenders nice and tight together to mimic like a one defender in a, in a, in a rush lane have them set to one bag. So they'll be starting to stance and then on the cadence, they'll snap out, set to one bag and punch. And then as soon as you punch, you're kicking to the next bag. When, when he enters your punch zone, you punch. Pound back in, punch. Kick back out, punch. Pound and kick. So they're getting pass pro pop. Sorry, they're getting snapping out of their stance. They're getting pass pro posture. Um, they're getting uh, change of direction, footwork. They're getting... Uh, feet in the ground, short, choppy steps. They're getting anchor in the ground. They're getting time in their punch when, uh, when that defender enters their punch zone. You got to kind of coach the defenders up, though. You don't want them just running forward. So I tell the defenders, you attack him when he squares you up just to, just to make it as functional and realistic as possible. You're going to pound and punch, kick and pound, uh, kick and punch, putting it all together. And it's almost like redirect in there as well. That could be another one that could that could definitely help. And then another progression in two bag punch is adding blitzers. So if you know you're playing a team that, uh, or if you want to coach their eyes and get them better at, at punching and pass protecting against defender or linebackers, you have three defenders in front of them, two up front as D lineman, a third behind them as a linebacker. So we'll pound and punch, kick and punch, change direction, punch, first whistle, D lineman with the hand shields move. Here comes your blitzer. Now I got to sit my ass down, sit my butt down on a blitzer, right? So like just having them feel that, having the having the um, the linebacker move inside or outside, you know, another part of the progression. If you have teams that are going to be blitzing, uh, that's really the only, you know, blitzer pass pro stuff that will do. Uh, a lot of times, if if guys are blitzing from deep or from depth, that ball's usually gone for us. We're real lucky. Ball's usually gone by then. But we still need to uh, be able to see that blitzer. And, and in the scheme, our eyes should be in the right spot. And we're always coaching the eyes when we're going over the scheme of, of pass pro. But even on those blitzers, our body position doesn't change. We're still on the inside V of the neck on that defender. Even if it's a linebacker, shit could be a corner, whatever. 
We are on the inside V of the neck, always trying to create that pocket. And then, you know, I mean, scheme wise, I mean, you, you guys are going to do, you're going to do what you're going to do. Um, you know, you're going to, you're going to choose what works best for your squad, for your, your, um, you know, whatever you're teaching offensively, if it's, you know, whatever quick game, or if it's three-step drop, five-step, seven-step, you're going to choose the, the, uh, type of pr uh, protection that works best for you guys. Um, big on big half slide and full slide. Um, they're really the three that I have experience with and I definitely feel comfortable coaching, but, um, I mean, I'm not going to assume, I, I hate to be this guy, but uh, I'm not going to assume, and I have them drawn up. Uh, so just, so we have them, uh, show them to you, and we can we just talk about, you know, what we're trying to do on each one, as my computer is like the slowest computer probably in the entire country right now. All right. I hope you guys can see this. All right. So um, pass pro rules basically could def de uh, depend on the front that you're going to face. You're going to have some rules versus the odd front and the even front. So if you were going to do like a big on big versus an even front, you could double team the man closest to the ball. Everyone else is one on one. And of course, just like I talked about in our fundamentals, we're trying to stay inside out on defenders. And if, if you're going to work a pass pro double, you could mirror that up to, let's say, a, a, run, a run scheme double team or a zone combo. You know, if you're running inside zone and you guys are working a double team, you've got this half of the defender and you have the center would have this half of the defender. Meanwhile, you're physically on the down line and mentally on the second level player. So that would marry up to what we teach in the zone concept. If you're working a run game double and it's to the left, you two are doubling this man to that man. You have this half, you have that half and you're doubling and coming off when that linebacker chooses you. So if there is a blitz and these guys are working their double, if this backer chooses the guard, the guard's going to kick off. He's going to be on the inside V of the, of, of the linebacker. If the uh, backer chooses the center, center's going to do the same thing. I forgot now talked a lot about guards and tackles and staying on the inside V it's different for the centers. And I believe it should be different for the centers. I'm sorry. I forgot this. The centers are different. They are going to be square on that defender, which means eye to eye, shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, foot to foot on that defender because they're creating the very top part of that pocket. So they must be a wall of humanity and form the top of that pocket. Does that make sense? Guards and tackles can be inside out. Let's work people outside, keep the pocket nice and clean while the centers are always square. Again, eye to eye, shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, foot to foot on those, on any defender that the center will face. We're always trying to work that. So as a center's working, setting to the man, I'm looking at, are they directly in front of that defender so they form the top part of that pocket? If they're working past that redirect, are they square on that defender? Is the center um, in two bag punch? Same thing. Are they square on that defender? Square again, eye to eye, shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, foot to foot on those defenders. Right? So if that backer chooses the center, he's going to attack the backer the same way he attacks the nose. If he was one on one, he's going to be square. He's going to form the top part of that pocket. Again, meanwhile, these guys are one on one. Versus, um, versus their defender. And then you can insert the back. The back could look inside out versus this backer and that alley player. If anyone comes from depth or if someone's up tight on that edge or up tough on that edge, the back would then block that. Or you send them out on a route. Big on big versus the even. Here's big on big right versus the even. Should have changed this up, but uh, you want to double team the man closest to the ball. So if these two, again, we're working this pass pro double on the defensive tackle. These two are working their halves on this defender with eyes on their linebacker in their tube. They're the linebacker closest to them. 
and that mirrors up or matches up with our with how we double team on zone. You've got your halves. You're going to drive the man. And if the backer chooses you, you choose them. Again, if the backer was to choose the center, center's going to move his body, stay square on that defender. If the backer chooses the guard, the guard kicks off but stays inside out on that defender. And then same thing, insert the back, look inside out. All right, versus the even. Here's a half slide to the left versus the even. Now in a half slide, you're going to have a, you know, a slide side and then a man side. So if we're going to slide to the left, whatever, you could have a call for it. You know, in college, it was Louie Louie. Louie was our, you know, half slide to the left. Center has the A gap to his left. Left guard has the A gap. No, sorry, this sorry. B gap to his left. And then the tackle would have the edge. And you're, you're basically kicking and blocking any defender that comes into your gap. Worried about a backer? He chooses the guard's gap. The guard's off. He chooses the center's gap. The center's off. You three would basically have these three. Or if you have an alley out here who's down on the edge, your tackle would work to the alley. In real football, the end would pinch to the guard. And then that nose would probably be heavy in a gap or maybe cross his face. Even if that nose was to cross the center's face, that nose belongs to the center. He's lined up in that gap. He's yours. And then our man side on the back side, these two guys are one-on-one -on -one versus those defenders. And if you're going to and if you're going to work one-on-one -on -one in pass pro, you're staying inside out on those defenders. And then you can insert the back opposite of the slide side to the man side, looking inside out versus uh, versus the backers or any blitzer. Half slide versus the odd front. Work in their gaps. Now the right guard becomes part of the slide. That nose is technically in his gap, so that guard's going to slide and jump that nose guard. <clears throat> so right guard would have left A gap. Center would have left A gap. Guard would have left B. And then tackle would have the edge. And then that singles up this tackle one-on-one -on -one versus the end. Then inserting the back opposite of the slide side, looking inside out on those defenders. Half slide right versus the odd, same thing. Now left guard's going to jump that nose, working their gaps, protecting their gaps, tackles looking at that edge or any C gap defender. Backside tackles one on one, and then insert in the back. All right, so I mean, those are the schemes. Again, you. You know, you're gonna you're gonna choose what works best for for you. Um, I'm I'm not the type to like sell a scheme to you. You know, I, I want to talk about the details and pass pro. Now, coach, right, so, this is just a question for me um, because I've I've actually tried to have all three of those schemes in in, in our arsenal. Mm -hmm. um, now, say you know you may you have less time, single platoon team, whatever. Is there one of those schemes you feel like? is a little bit more, I don't know, I guess the word maybe is malleable to all fronts and stunts um, that you're going to get or it's easier to teach. I guess what my question is, if, if you had to, if you had, were very limited with time and you felt like you really just wanted to choose one and be really good at it, which one would you choose? Uh, I love, I love half slide. Yeah, me too. That's, but it's, yeah. But then uh, on the man side, teams can start playing games with you. Right. And then, you, you know, get you just get you out of position, you know, like, um, right. But and, I, I love your slime, but yeah, and, and that big, was, on, big on big. Okay. That was the one I'd say big on big. on big. big on big. I would say, yeah, I'd say big on big. I think, I think it's the easiest to teach at the high school level. Um, I think, I mean, it, it protects the even front, the odd front, you know, almost every, any blitz, as long as you have enough guys to block it, you're, you're going to get it blocked. I'd say big on. I appreciate that coach. Thank you. Yeah. I think, I think when you, when you start adding multiple protections, you know, these high school kids, you know, they, they, they barely know where the hell they are. So like when you start adding more than one protection, they're going to lose their minds. Like maybe a, maybe a big on big and then a sprint out protection. Sprint right. out's like its own animal though. You know what I mean? But as soon as you start adding, like, all right, we're going to do half slide and we're going to do full slide and we're going to do this, we're going to do that, they're so, going to 
it could right. it could become a mess with the high school kid. You know, what right? I mean? And you know, I really agree with something you said because simple is the best, man. Like, when you start throwing all these different protections and all these different rules, you know, these high school kids are the brains are going to pop. I actually have a question um, that was just sent in. It says, "What does big on big look like versus the thirty front?" I think you might have showed that. I'm, I, I, I could be wrong. I'm not. I don't know. I think I showed it. Messed now, up. Let, me, uh, let me get back over to huddle. Let's go big on big. All right. So in a, in a big on big versus the odd, um, you would go, you know, center one on one versus the nose, and you could you would tell the center, just let him know, like you're you're not going to have help. You are one on one with that defender. So if the dude, you know I mean, if he's a stud, let's go. We're going to hang on for dear life. We're going to create the top of that pocket, right? If the dude is like a, you know, like a Bergen Catholic major dude, you could have some help, you know, by the back. All right. But we want the center to assume like, dude, you are by yourself. One-on-one. So that free, he's one-on-one. So now, the right guard and right tackle are going to work together. Then the left guard and left tackle would work together. So what, what you could do is you would talk about, all right, boys, you have a pass pro double on the defensive end. Two should always beat one. You two are pass pro double. So tackle, you have the outside half. Guard, you have the inside half. He go, you give him nothing. You force him outside. If you guys get beat inside, we're gonna, you're going to find somebody else. You can't get beat inside in a pass pro double, right? So as these guys would work that pass pro double, they're going to have their eyes on two other linebackers, right? So let's say it's it's the backer in the alley. They would both have their head on a swivel. Their eyes are on the, the inside backer and the alley player. Guard, of course, would have his eyes on that inside backer for the most part. Tackle would have his eyes on the on the alley player. Just like zone concepts, we try to teach them, like, yo, if that backer chooses you, you choose him. So if this backer ends up blitzing, who do you think would come off to him? The guard. If the alley player was to blitz off the edge, who would come off? The tackle would come off in their pass pro double. So if the alley comes down and he's blitzing off the edge, whether it's, whether it's um, you know from depth or whatever, the tackle would kick off to this alley player attacking him the same way he would in a one-on-one pass pro situation inside out on that defender. Again, creating the pocket as he would kick off. The guard is now one-on-one versus the end, right? So you would handle, you would try to handle these three defenders with these two blockers. All right. Just like in any, um, you know, scheme or you know zone scheme and, and zone scheme that we would teach and in the way what we I would teach it is if this backer's down he's yours the double team is off and you're Chevy Chevy on that defender you're one on one so the guard would it would of course on the inside V of the neck on this defender and the tackle would be on the inside V of the neck of this defender. The guard would have to tell the tackle somehow like hey man I'm here you can make like a a tough call or whatever call you want to make um, that guard to make that, Hey, I'm, I'm off of the double. I have this defender who's right in front of me. One of my linebackers. If the alley comes down and he's down tough off the edge, which, you know, we see a decent amount. If the alley's <clears throat> down right now, the tackle would be off to that alley right now. And then the guard knows I don't have help. I don't need help. I'm already on the inside via the neck of this defender, but I'm one on one versus those defenders. You know, again, have the tackle, you know, make whatever call you want. Hey, hey, tough, or, or you know, whatever you want to say to let his buddy know, hey, I'm off. I'm going to fan out to this alley. Classic thing is ends, I'm sorry, tackles oversetting this alley player, meaning jumping way out here. On this alley, just because he's way out here, you don't have to. He's got to come to you to get to the quarterback. So don't allow those dudes to overset those defenders. As, as long as their eyes are on that inside view of the neck, they're, 
they've got their body in the right spot, you're going to be able to block that guy. Same thing on the other side. You know, you guys, you're going to work this, these three defenders. Now, if both of them are down, we talk a lot about, all right, who's most dangerous right now? Who's closest to the ball? Who's closest to the quarterback? You know, easy question for them to answer. Well, this guy's closer. They might say that this guy's better or a better pass rusher, but this guy is closer. He's most dangerous. So you've got to choose the guy that's most dangerous. If all of them are down, better get rid of that damn ball. All right, because we got five, maybe six to, to block these seven dudes. So get rid of that ball. Um, so, you know, kind of goes back to uh, what we teach in run game. You know, the closer these guys are to the line of scrimmage, the less of a double team you're going to have. So don't anticipate a lot of help. Always block the most dangerous guys, guys closest to the ball. And that's, that's how I'd, I'd probably block the big on big versus that that odd front. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate I hope that it. answered your question, Coach. I think so. So I have um, got some game footage. This this will be the last thing I'll share. Um, unless, of course, unless there's more questions, which I'm all about answering. I'll do my best to answer them. I think you've been very detailed, Coach. As I as I, I warn these guys, man, you need you leave no stone unturned. So I see we, we got a good group here that was in for the long haul, man. Doing an excellent job. What are we at? Like an hour? That's it. Uh, no, nah, we're we're a little over an hour, big dog. Ah, that's hey, that's, that's crazy. with me. I got nothing else. Like, Let's are, go. We go all night. Let's go. <laughs> Talking about line play. There we go. All right. So, <laughs> so here we got um, – we have an odd front. Um, odd front and – let me full screen this. Sorry, boys. All right, we got an odd front. So, yeah, I'm throwing a blitz in there, you know, very first clip. That Like the worst thing you could possibly do. But here's your odd front. Um, backers down. Inside backer is down. So right now, if these guys are working – let's say, a, you know, a big on big versus these three defenders, that guard is going to make whatever call you want your guy to make. He's going to block that defender right now. Now the tackle knows I don't have help. I'm one-on-one -on -one versus this defensive end. These two guys would be working the end and uh, there is no inside backer. So he, they'd be working maybe these three defenders right here. Okay. Try to see some fundamentals. There's a center chasing that nose guard. His feet get a little bit tight. And you see when feet get tight, they almost cross over. I probably tore him up for that, too. He's usually really good at keeping a good base. But he's not ready for contact. And he gets pushed back. He was a stud. Dude, stud, big, thick thighs. He could bend. He was tough. He was strong. So he's able to get under that defender. Love the left tackle here. He stays inside out on this defender. And I love that he drives him as deep as possible. So when we talk about making the pocket and pass protecting, let's say, against a defensive end, I tell the tackles, you're going to kick and you're going to be as patient as possible. Never get beat inside. Let him go outside. Let him go outside. Shoulder stay square. When that defensive end or edge defender, edge rusher, Gets even with your shoulder. As my shoulders are square and I'm kicking, he's even with my shoulder. He is committed outside. Now I'm going to run him by as deep as I can. I want the inside hand on the hip, outside hand somewhere inside the sternum, somewhere inside the breastplate, and we're going to push him as deep as possible. That's deep enough, so I'll take it as deep as, as you can. I tell those tackles, or if guards are going to run someone by, you know, defender wants B gap. All right, let him have B gap. Push him to the pylon. Wherever you are on the field, you push him to the pylon. Just push him to the pylon. And if we do that, we're going to push him as deep as possible. And we're going to keep the stick figure upright. So both both tackles push their defenders as deep as they can. Left tackle got he got bowled over a little bit. That dude, he's going against his pretty dang good he's a stud. all right so we're seeing some fundamentals and then um you know i'm adding details as we go but you know like the tackles run dudes by love the left tackles feet here 
Love them stepping and replacing short, choppy steps, grazing the grass, staying inside out. Left guard, he chooses that backer that's up, inside out on the defender. We Again, we want to force those defenders to work our whole body. So that's why we're talking about inside via the neck, not the inside shoulder, not even the inside number, inside via the neck. Center's feet are a little bit better here, shorter, choppier steps, right? I want those hands up, but he, he was he was a wily vet. He was good at timing his punch. There's our pass pro double up top, staying inside out. There's the tackle, forcing him out. So as I get my hands on these guys, and again, we're two platoon, I'm super lucky. You know, we get to go over details with the right tackle. So like this guy he's going against is, is like long and athletic and probably better than our right tackle. And I only say probably better because he might listen to this one day. Um, but you see him flashing that, flashing the hand right there. So this DN was really good at using his hands. So he gets him to, co to commit. When you flash that hand, flash your hand, get him to commit and use his hands, get the D end off balance. And now we, we get him where we want and we can force him outside. So here are these guys creating a pretty decent pocket. I like that pocket, I'll take that. I love the center standing on his ground here. I'm gonna let the dudes work. All right, here's out front again. Give me something good. There's some good work right there by our center. Short choppy steps, working his hands. You know, so using these fundamentals and I don't know if these guys, you know, if, if we didn't <clears throat> focus on details, I don't know if they would, you know, work their hands like that and get keep their body in a good position. All right, man, here's our left guard getting beat inside, getting beat in. Here's the guard oversetting, the oversetting. We can never get beat inside by anybody. Here's an alley coming late off the edge. Love the tackle's eyes here. Love the tackle's eyes. So he's, he's on that end until that backer chooses him. So here he punches that end and then works it out to the alley player. He could probably, again, be a little more inside out on this alley player. So he kind of oversets and drops his head. When we drop our head, you got, you're, gonna be, you're gonna get yourself beat inside. Left guard was a freshman at the time, starting against you know, one of the best teams in the state. Just loaded, teams loaded. He's a freshman, he's hanging in there, tough as nails. He's odd front again. Love this group. This group of O linemen were, were nasty, nasty dudes, and uh, really, really detail oriented. A championship O line. Those guys were. Um, you'll see these guys working. Another fun, another, uh, I guess, fundamental that we'll use is in in quick game. We will up kick. So everyone will. And the, the way I, I teach it is, you're going to attack the defender. You're going to use zone footwork inside zone footworks inside zone footwork and pass pro with pass pro posture so they're going to go and attack the defender but instead of run game hiding our numbers we're going to snap out we're going to attack them with our feet and then we're going to get our hands on those defenders and the whole function is to get their hands down you could just do that if that was your only pass pro go attack them with your feet in pass pro posture as long as those hands are down and bodies in the right position. So that's that um, fundamental or that scheme marries up with our run game too, just like everything else. In in one-on-one -on -one blocks, we're on the inside via the neck. We're gonna go and attack it with our hands to get their hands down. You notice here's two getting rid of that ball quick. Again, the function of it is to get their hands down, get the defender's hands down. They're, they're going and attacking with their hands in pass pro posture. Love how the left tackle does it here. I think we can be a little more violent. But here's the center sitting his butt down. So I just call that an up kick. People have plenty of names for it. I just call it an up kick. All right, so here's an even front. Is this up kick again? No, it's not. Regular pass pro. Left tackle working against the defensive end one-on-one. -on -one. Let the D end work outside. Force him out. We don't want him taking the shortest path to the quarterback. Here's our right tackle. Love the right tackle here. He almost gets beat, but he changes direction and his shoulders turn a little. 
at some point you're going to meet a point and overturn when he works inside when, when the tackles anybody really guards or tackles when you reach the point and overturn you're pounding in pounding in trying to get inside leverage trying to get inside out on the defender you'll reach the point and overturn where he wants inside let him have inside drive his ass flat down the line of scrimmage as flat as possible Again, keeping the pocket clean, as clean as possible. Eventually, he's, he kind of pounds inside, turns his shoulders a little. But all right, he's pointing over turn. I'm just going to start drive blocking him. I'm going to make a pile of bodies. Right guards one-on-one -on -one versus the D-tackle. You see how strong that dude is. That dude across from him was like 300-pounder. Right guard was like, you know, I'll bust his chops. He was like 165 pounds soaking wet. Not anymore, but he was. But he's super strong. You see him getting that leverage inside. He's got his feet down in the ground. So you're seeing some of these fundamentals in uh, you know, the in-game situation. Even in front again. <clears throat> this end down bottom was probably head up on this tackle, if not really close. So we always talk about protecting the inside first. So he's going to pound in, close down that lane for that end, so he has to go outside and we stay inside out. We're going to change direction. We're going to stay on that inside V. There's your pass head redirect. There's your mirror dodge. There's your two bag punch. And then these right guard and center are going to build a ball right here on this defender. On man closest to the ball. Looks like left tackle gets beat inside here. Let's see if he oversets. Oh, he jumped way out there. Jumped way out there. Can't jump out there. It's an overset. We don't want to overset that defender. It takes He takes that straight line path to the quarterback. And we got the ball off. I think I got a couple more clips. Here's a little other, another. Um, looks like an up kick by the left tackle here. Here's Big Sal. The right tackle position. So I'll give them the freedom to use a changeup. So not only can defenders use their pass rush changeups, whether it's a different pass rush move or whatever, working inside or you know whatever it is, we get to change it up too. So we have a normal pass pro rules and, and pass pro posture. Then we use our up kick. And I give them the freedom to choose to use it whenever they want. So right now, our left tackle knows that left end's a stud. So I'm going to go attack him, even flashing his hands too. I'm going to go attack him, get him off balance as best I can. Always protect inside out first. Force him outside. He's even with my shoulder. Now I'm going to run him by. I wish he would stay attached, and I want him to push him to the pylon so we get guys running as deep as possible. Love the patience by the right tackle. Just kicking, kicking, patient with his hands. He enters the punch zone. Now we deliver our hands. I like that pass pro double. Give him nothing. Give him nothing. Here's pass that redirect by the right guard. Working inside. Get to the inside V. Works back out. I'm going to kick and then run him to the pylon. Finish it off. Keep the pocket clean. I mean, it ain't perfect, man, but we're going to chase it, though. We're definitely going to chase it. Here's some edge pressure. We are not responsible for that alley player. We are blocking the defensive end right now. The right tackle is blocking the defensive end. Go ahead and try it. Ball's going to be gone. Love the left guard here, setting inside out on that defender. I want them to keep their shoulders square, but at some point, again, we're going to run these guys by. I want you to push them to the pylon. Push them to the pylon. Pass pro double, love it, give them nothing. I, would, I just want to see more bodies on the ground, though, you know? If I can change one thing, I just want more bodies on the ground. Love this pass pro double by, by the guys on the right side, right guard, right tackle. You can see the right guard's eyes where they should be on the inside backer. And he's very patient with it. He's still looking, head on a swivel. Head on a swivel. Now it's time to make contact on the end. I'm going to force him out. Left tackle. My man was the king. He was the king of oversetting. But he's lucky that he's athletic enough to get his body back inside out. Here's our left guard. Working the end. 
left tackle working pressure off the edge. Our center sitting his butt down, sitting his butt down with leverage. My man's like, my man's like, he's measuring in five nine. My man ain't five nine. He had shoes on. He's five nine shoes. So he's got some good leverage. He can sit his butt down on guys. Feet are getting better too. Couple more clips here, guys. Love that wall of humanity right there. They show up, looks like a bare front. Maybe threes, maybe, you know, tight four eyes. Everybody's pounding in. We're all inside out. Wall of humanity. Love it. That's Yamir Knight. He's a stud. Look out. Looks familiar here, huh, Coach? This team looks awful familiar to me. I don't know. I don't know if I can place them. As long as you don't show show the scoreboard, we're good. <laughs> wide ends. Wide ends here. Eyes are on the inside backer. So you see, you can kind of see both guards kind of talking. They're pointing and talking. Eyes are inside. Here's, here's the guard identifying that there's going to be some type of pressure. Guard doesn't know if he's going to choose him or not, but he sees him up tough, and he's always going to protect – that quarterback back there. So this guard does a great job with his eyes inside as well. And then we're able to come off. Looks like his eyes are on him. He sees him right now. Now he's going to try to get inside out on that defender. Inside out, inside out, inside out, inside out, and then inside out, and then inside out. Using your feet. Get your body in the right spot. I like the right tackle here, sitting his butt down against big body. Big, tough body. We're going to sit down with leverage. Love how the guard, love how the right guard fans on the run. So he pounds in. He's ready for this pressure. No pressure to his side. But we're going to get out. We're going to bug out. We're going to go help our tackle now. Fanning on the run. Good job by the left tackle staying inside out. Didn't overset that time. That makes me happy. Somehow, I think we, we may have blocked these guys on this play. I hope we block them on this play. If not, we're going to learn from it. But these guys were major dudes. Dude. Sorry. Major dude. Major dude. Major dude. Major dude. Major dude. All over. But the dudes fall. We actually got a win in this game. They opened up a brand new, like, $25 million stadium. Beautiful stadium. We got to open it up there and uh, got the W, 42-30. It's pretty sweet. Felt good. All right, so here's some stunt. These guys were running stunts all game. We prepared for them in like third and long, but these guys were – because that's what they showed on tape. So we picked up a few stunts. We're like, all right, boys, we might see some stunts on third and long. And they stunted every single play. So um, working some games. So we will practice versus stunts. And, again, we're lucky enough we're able to. So if these two guys see the stunt right here, what they want to do is if their body's in the right spot, they're going to be able to stone that penetrator. you got to stone the penetrator. And they're going to mirror their defender until someone bumps them off or they see the looper. So right now the end, of course, is going to loop. See, by his pre-snap body position. So the penetrator is going to be the left, this lefty tackle. Left guard has to stone the penetrator. But the tackle's not getting on a different level. He's not, um, he's not vertical setting. They're all on the same level. They're all working the same kick angle. So as he sees this defender loop, the tackle is going to mirror this defender, bump off the guard to the looper, and the guard will come off as, when he sees the looper and his buddy bumps him off. I think I think they do a pretty decent job of picking up the stunt. Major dudes stunning. It's hard, really hard to block. They take their pass set. Come on. There we go. Love the left tackle's eyes. He sees, all right, I'm gonna get a loop. I'm gonna pound back in. Now that end that sorry, the penetrator, the D tackle is mine. Then the guard is off. No, don't like him dropping his head. We had to work on that. But now the guard is off to the looper. We have the offensive lineman whose D lineman in front of him loops will call out loop. 
not both of them, but just the man who has the person in front of him that loops. So the left tackle is yelling, loop, 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 getting in, stoning that penetrator, and then throwing it. Did I talk about a major dude? 15 is a dude. So we got some dudes, too. I bet you it's a stun. Oh, my goodness. No stun. It's incredible. All right, so here, here's a, a bad example. Here's, here's the left guard getting beat inside. Can we get beat inside? No, can't get beat inside. Right tackle fighting, scratching and clawing. Hands in the right spot. Love it. Love the pass pro double. Give them nothing. But left guard, we can't get beat inside, man. Can't get beat inside. We've got to pound in. Got to pound inside. Get, got to get your body where it needs to be. Bet you this one's a stunt. Oh, crap. Here we go. Here's a stunt. So, again, another, another awesome thing about being two platoon is we're going to get to watch some tape and see some pre-snap stuff. And we're going to get to coach these guys on pre-snap stuff. And you can tell by their alignment who was going to loop. It's classic at the high school level. So the right tackle already knows. He knows it's coming. He's going to mirror that defender until someone bumps him off. He, left right guard's going to mirror that defender until someone bumps him off. They stone the penetrator. Well, hopefully stone the penetrator. And they are able to switch that thing off. Now, yeah, the right guard wasn't great here. But he recovers, and he's got his body in the right position. So it's a win. Pass that redirect. We're just hanging on there, hanging on. But our body gets in the right spot, and he throws a piss missile to another major dude. Devin Demo, Stud. Beautiful throw. Probably the best throw of uh, QB's career. All right, we're back to the top. So those are all the clips that I have. Fellas, that's uh, that's all I got for my presentation, man. I hope there are questions. I hope there are people still on. Um, we whittled on. we whittled them down, Coach. But uh, there's a couple on. Um, but I think you did a great job, uh, Coach. Again, as I warned all of them, you know, I knew we worked together before, man. You, you do a great job, extremely detailed. It's uh, there's no confusion why you guys are so good, man. So. Um, if anybody has any questions, now is the time to ask them. If not, um, we're going to go ahead and get off here. Just a, just another reminder, um, if you want to go back and review this, you want to share it, whatever, I'm going to post this to my YouTube channel at some point throughout the week. We will have another presentation Thursday night, tentatively Thursday night at 7.30. Um, but, uh, Coach? One, one last thing. Yeah. One last thing. Brad, appreciate you so much for the opportunity. I love doing this stuff. I love talking to a line play, man. I can go all night, right? Yeah. Um, I'm on Twitter, so if anybody wants to hit me up, at Chris Fomori. Um, if anybody wants the presentation, hit me up. Um, hit me up. I'll send it to you. But I'm on Facebook, too. Reach out, man. Let's talk ball. Let's talk a line play. Um, but, dude, Coach, thanks a lot. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. All right, guys. Um, have a great night. See you later. Later.